So you've decided you want to visit a sherry bodega. And if you go in there, they will, in the spirit of neutrality, give you a list of all of the bodegas where tours are available. But I think the reality is, standing here, you'll feel an almost magnetic pull drawing you down the hill to the grandfather of all of the bodegas, Bodega Tio Pepe, and the producer of the world's largest selling Fino Sherry. So, venga. These are wines that once dominated the world and made Jerez and the surrounding towns of the Sherry Triangle some of the richest places on earth. Welcome to another episode of Sherry Aficionado. And today we're going to discover how the young 23-year-old entrepreneur Manuel Maria Gonzalez established a small bodega right here in 1835. How this grew to be the greatest of all the bodegas in the region. Now, if you do decide to visit this bodega, chances are you won't be alone. They have more than 200,000 visitors a year and they've really got this eno-tourism thing down to a fine art. Fortunately, today we can slip in the main entrance and I'm delighted to be met by Carlos Gonzalez Gordon, fifth generation member of the family who still own this bodega and the regional sales director for Gonzalez BS. Uh, well, here we have some uh, paintings. Uh, there you have the founder. Okay. Yeah. You have uh, Manuel Crispul and Pedro Novasco. Wow, what do we have here? Okay, so let's start here. This is the original constitution of the company with the three first shareholders. So you have Manuel Maria Gonzalez, you have uh, Juan Bautista du Bosque, and you have Gutierrez Agüera. Uh -huh. They were the first uh, shareholders. When Manuel Maria Gonzalez started the company, he needed a bit of money, of mm -hmm. course, so mm -hmm. he started looking for some partners. So these were the first, and the company was called, at the beginning, Gonzalez du Bosque. Mm -hmm. until 1855 that it moved to González Vies. And Dubosc was from uh, Catalonia, right? Uh, Dubosc was, uh, but uh, with relations with Sanlúcar also. Ah, oh, okay, okay, right. Okay, and here uh, we have the first reference that we have for Tio Pepe. Mm. This is from 1844, and uh, from England, the, the Vies, they are telling, they are writing, so let's see what can we do with this very pale wine that you so highly recommend. There's no future in that stuff, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine in those days and what your paper yeah, is uh, yeah. today that you can have a glass in around 110 countries. Yeah, yeah. Which is very good. I think it's one of the best uh, icons and, and products from Spain. Oh, I think so. Worldwide. And one of the reasons why I wanted to, I mean, Absolutely. there are so many reasons to, to see you guys is that I think, it, you know, the distribution is so incredible. Almost Absolutely. anyone watching my channel can go to a store in their local town and have a glass, of, have a glass of Tio Pepe. And enjoy a glass of Tio yeah, Pepe. Yeah. Super. And I think that from here, uh, that we have um, uh, some historical things in the papers, we will go to see some liquid history. Liquid history. Okay, that, sounds that I great. think that Sounds very good. It's my kind of stuff. Okay, please. Thank you. Wow. So welcome to welcome to our old tasting room. Okay, this uh, has been kept exactly as it was when the founder passed away. It looks like it. Yes. Uh, <laughs> There we have the founder, Mr. Manuel Maria Gonzalez. Yeah. Okay. I, uh, he was my great grandfather, so I'm a member of the fifth generation of the family. I think that uh, here is very interesting because at the beginning the sherry was uh, sold in botas mainly. Yeah. So they were keeping a bottle with the samples of uh, of all the shipping. So in case of any problem, they can come 
and analyze what was happening. Well, wow, quite scientific, huh? quite yes. scientific. <laughs> uh, I think that also is very interesting if you have a look when the company started, we started with 10 bottas and such a big growth. So after 20 years, the company was leading the Jerez exports. So from 10 to uh, 10 to 115, 226, 400, yeah. 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 500. Wow. So growing quite fast. So this is a, a veritable unicorn business, absolutely, as we would absolutely. see it today. So uh, and until the figures that you know from today, where you can have a glass of two pepe and other cherries, wherever you go in the yeah, world. Yeah, yeah, pretty much anywhere. So I think that this is a fantastic part of a, a bit of liquid history. Yeah, with, absolutely. Uh, Gonzalez Villas and very emotional. I I'm sure, and, and I, I, I'm sure I've put my head through the door on the tour, mm -hmm. but I've never had the chance to come in here before. This is just uh, incredible. So, perfect. I'm glad Thank that you, you like it. Thank you. Now we will continue our tour, I think, in Calle Ciervo. So here we are in the original Tio Pepe cellar. When Manuel Gonzalez first established the business, he needed a little bit of financial help and emotional support, and he turned to his uncle Joe, who became Tio, the Tio Pepe we know about. Tio Pepe only asked for one thing, a door, so he could come into this small area and sample some of the wines that were in his name. So this is a very, very special place, and on top of the joy of being in this place, I also have the great honor of being honor. here with Antonio Flores, who is one of the most famous people, I think, in Jerez and one of the most esteemed enologists in town. So it is a pleasure to be here with you, sir. Could you tell me a little bit about the philosophy of winemaking at González Bias and how that expresses itself through the Tio Pepe collection? Bueno, pues, la filosofía, fíjate, Paul, que el Tio Pepe era muy inteligente, escogió el mejor lugar de la bodega. Una pequeña bodega, pero con una... ¿Cómo huele en esta bodega? Sí, sí. Es una maravilla, huele a humedad después de pasar todo el verano. Era la bodega con un nivel de humedad más alto y con mejor temperatura. Ideal para cuidar a nuestra levadura, mm. a nuestro pequeño ser vivo. ¿eh? Nuestra, yo le llamo cariñosamente nuestra florita, uh -huh. ¿eh? porque de alguna manera es un ser vivo. ¿Y dónde estamos? Pues estamos donde nace Tío Pepe, donde nuestro fundador le dedica estas 99 botas a nuestro fundador, a su tío, que prácticamente es el que le aconseja en esos primeros pasos. Por lo tanto, aquí nace Tío Pepe, en eh, 1844, uh -huh. y yo tuve el honor de nacer aquí arriba. Aquí arriba, Paul, estaba el dormitorio no. de mis padres. <risa> y bueno, y aunque yo tuve poco que ver en eso, Cierto. pero sí, para mí fue un honor y un privilegio haber nacido encima de la solera Tío Pepe Fundacional. Por eso yo digo que aquí no hay sangre, aquí hay Tío Pepe. Y vamos a disfrutar de ese Tío Pepe, de una de mis fotos favoritas. Fíjate cómo está de flor, ¿eh? está, puedes probarlo, sí, sí. Está magnífica. Está cremosa. Sí. Para ti. Bueno, estamos, fíjate, Paul, rodeados de firmas de personas ilustres que nos han visitado. Por ejemplo, fíjate qué dedicatoria más bonita. Paco de Lucía ah. fue un gran guitarrista, ¿Sí? eh, bueno, nacido en Algeciras, gaditano. Fue uno de los mejores guitarristas que ha tenido la guitarra flamenca. So flamenca, sí. Flamenca sí. española. Sí. Y, y su dedicatoria es preciosa. Dice, ¿por qué no me dejáis vivir aquí? Ah, él quería vivir rodeado de todos sus vinos. Y bueno, te voy a enseñar una bota que para nosotros forma parte de todo nuestro trabajo de recuperación. A mí me gusta decir 
que no hay futuro para quien no cree en su pasado. Uh -huh. Y eso es una realidad. Porque hoy que ha estado eh, con Carlos en el archivo histórico, uh -huh. utilizamos el archivo histórico no solamente como fondo do documental, sino como inspiración para muchos de los nuevos vinos que sacamos al mercado. Y veíamos como en los primeros archivos encontrábamos vinos en viaje, vinos que estaban viajando, sí, que sí. estaban a bordo de barco, pero que eran propiedad de González Díaz. O sea, se llamaba vi en viaje redondo. Y decidimos, bueno, con marketing, con José Argudo, que luego vas a conocer, sí, sí. decidimos sacar los vinos de ida y vuelta. ...con motivo de los primeros 500 años... ...de la primera circunnavegación del uh -huh, mundo... Uh -huh. eh, ...primero sacamos un palo cortado... De, ...de ida y vuelta... ...una añada del 90, de 1990... ...que le dio la vuelta a Sudamérica... ...y volvió sí. a Jerez... ...un viaje que duró aproximadamente seis meses... ...pero este fue el viaje grande... ...el que conmemoraba la circunnavegación... ...este viñave... ...un vino de crianza biológica... ...ya casi terminal... ...lo escogimos para que viajara con el Juan Sebastián Elcano... ...durante 11 meses... ...casi meses, un año... ¿Eh? ...durante un año le sí. dio la vuelta al mundo... ...en un viaje heroico... ...no tan heroico como el de... Magallanes y Juan Sebastián Elcano... ...pero casi, porque... ...fue en plena pandemia donde la tripulación del buque escuela... <risa> ...no se pudo bajar del barco sí. en toda la travesía... ...realmente lo que llegamos a recibir es un vino espectacular... ...un vino donde se había producido... ...una intensa crianza biológica sumergida... ...porque con el movimiento del barco... Uh -huh, uh -huh. ...la flor se hundió y aceleró el proceso de crianza... ...realmente como a mí me gusta decir... ...es un vino que ha aprendido durante la navegación sí, sí. y ha adquirido todavía más grandeza, más largura y más longitud. Maravillosa. Muy bien. As we wandered through the bodega, I took the opportunity to ask Antonio about the classification of Fino wines. He picked up a piece of chalk, found an empty barrel, and well, over to him. Okay. Este trazo con el que marco las botas que van destinadas a fino, sí, sí, sí. a crianza biológica, fíjate que cuando una bota se distingue de sus hermanas por su especial finura, por su especial delicadeza, se le pone un pequeño apéndice que parece una palma, hay que tener uh -huh. un poquito de palma? imaginación. Sí, sí. El número de palmas va en función de la edad. O sea, una palma, seis años, dos palmas, ocho, Año, tres palmas, 10 años, cuatro palmas, en este caso, 55 años. Estos tres son finos. Sí. ¿eh? Fino, fino viejo, sí. fino amontillado, sí. y este es un amontillado sí, viejísimo. Sí, sí. Viejísimo. Es fantástico. I'm here uh, taking the, the, the yeast from the total solera of the, of the Tio Pepe. Le comentaba que estaba aquí comprobando, bueno, pues la flor, el estado de la flor, porque es muy importante hacerle ese seguimiento para luego, en, en, en la época de primavera, poder hacer la selección final, ni más ni menos que de Tio Pepe en rama, porque estamos aquí, en la solera bueno, de sí. Tio Pepe. Silvia ya lleva dos años clasificando conmigo Tio Pepe en rama. Efectivamente. Bueno, y veo que, que esa bota tiene muchas cruces, ¿no? Sí, muchas estrellas. La verdad que ¿Eh? tenemos aquí una parte de la solera que está buenísima, la estaba probando y está excepcional. Ver, pues nos va a ofrecer una copa seguro. ¿no? Por supuesto. So we have managed to find our way into another secret part of the uh, Bodega Tio Pepe. 
I would like to think that this was the shop, but it's not the shop. Uh, it is the kind of library of bottles of, um, of production over the years. But uh, why will I explain this when Sylvia here can tell us a little bit more about this place? Of course, well, from Gonzalez Bias. And like my father said, uh, Gonzalez Bias has a different uh, archives. One is the, the historic archive, the other one is the bodega, and now we are in the liquid archive. So to me, this is very, very emotional because um, I have been working uh, a lot in, in this project. Uh, we opened it um, four years ago, and we work a lot um, uh, relabeling and, and storing three more than 3,000 bottles 3, that 3,000 we have here. And these bottles um, are property of the different members from, from the Familia González okay. who uh, donate them and we can work with all this treasure. So what are some of the highlights then in the room that you would like to share okay. with us? We, we, we could, if we had more time, we could go through sequentially, but maybe just pick out a few that might be of interest. Uh, we have uh, such as um, uh, old vintage, date from, don't know, 1849. Uh, 1850. We have also um, very singular state vintage, like as uh, La Racha from 1930, and amazing bottles uh, mm, like first edition of Las Palmas, for example. This is a, a amazing, amazing room, and indeed. Uh, for my uh, my parent and 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 me, it's um don't know it's um mm, library, a liquid library where we can learn all about the style of of the house. Yeah. Uh, and how often do you get to open some of these historic bottles? <laughs> Not, not very often. <laughs> you can tell me, no, I won't tell you. <laughs> not very often, <laughs> but on, in, in the opening, we open uh, four different bottles from different years, and we decant it and, and serve. And the amazing thing of, of uh, this is that all, that all bottles that we have in, in, in the historic bottle cellar are drinkable. Well, that concludes part one of our visit with Gonzalez Diaz. Join me in part two, which I'll be releasing in a couple of weeks, where we can discover more about this remarkable bodega and even get to sample some of the wonderful wines they produce here. Now, if you enjoyed this episode, please do like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us to promote a new enterprise like this. And as this is a new channel, I'd love to hear about your own experiences with Tio Pepe or any of the other Gonzalez Bias wines we've featured in this video. I'd also be very happy to have any broader suggestions from you about subjects that you'd like me to cover in future episodes. So that's it for today. Look out for part two, which is coming soon. And in the meantime, salud y nos vemos.